Welcome to my video guide for the Stamina Templar DD for Thieves Guild update. So just a short introduction. It is very important that you understand the idea behind the build, okay? Don't just copy paste it. You can do that, but you will never be as good as a person that understands the idea and the mechanics behind the the build and skills etc okay so it is very important that you understand the idea what I'm trying to do with this build what's what's it here for okay so there is quite a lot of gear choices available that are really nice and I just I've chosen like two setups, one for wet dungeons and solo content and one for trials, okay? So what I will do now is first I will explain the gear I use for wet dungeons, so for my content and solo content, okay? Then I will go through the champion points, then through the skills. And then at the end, I will explain the trial setup I use. And I will also explain the werewolf, okay? Because this build is very effective in fights that last less than 30 seconds. But you need werewolf for that, okay? Because werewolf is it's, it's crazy strong in single target fights that last less than 30 seconds. And I will try to explain you that, okay? Also, if you have any questions, you can always hop on my Twitch. You will find the link in the de description of the video. I will not showcase any fights in this video guide, but you can always hop on my Twitch to see how I play. And I will also update or upload videos from time to time where I use my Stamina Templar just to showcase you how I do things, okay? Okay, let's talk about the gear setup. Again, trial setup and werewolf setup at the end of the video, okay? I will do all the steps, the, like the gear explanation, CP skill, when it is, in the, put it in the description with the timer so you can click on it and it goes automatically there. So now we first want to see the veteran dungeon and solo content setup I use, okay? <laughs> you also see I have quite low health. I will get to that in a second. So now let's see. There was a lot of discussions with like Nightmother's Case versus Hunting's Rage. Now I've made some tests and as you can see here in the picture the difference is really small, okay? <laughs> Nightmother's case came out on top a little bit, but it's like the difference is really small, okay? So if you already have five pieces Hunting's Rage, then, then keep those. You don't need to craft a new set. You don't need to craft Nightmother's case five pieces only because it does like like 70 damage more okay like it, it, the difference is so small it yeah if you have hunting rage just keep it it doesn't really matter okay <laughs> but now anyway night mothers as you can see you won the battle so i equip this here five pieces night mother's case make sure to have everything divine i only have infused here because i don't have a don't have divine trait unlocked on chess piece yet sadly <laughs> we want to go seven pieces divines okay because we want to buff our mundo stone as much as possible so again five pieces night mother's case as you can see it has like two pieces crit a weapon damage and then the five piece bonus like the tooltip is wrong, okay? It says it says like 2.6k reduction, but in reality it's like 4 to 5k. They increased it at some point, 
by like 50%. That's what I heard, but forgot to upgrade the tooltip. <clears throat> Apparently, okay. So, yeah. Now, <clears throat> very important, this debuff. So, if you have more stamina people in the group, this debuff applies to all group members. So, if you let me say like this, if you put the debuff on an enemy mob, your body also gets the increased damage, okay? So, the like the armor reduction is not only for you, it also helps your body, okay? So, if you have several Templars or several stamina dudes, Make sure that one maybe always runs a uh, Night Mother and the others have the Hunting's Rage setup, okay? Because the debuff does not stack. So basically only one dude needs Night Mothers. And then the others can use Hunting's to get the full benefit. If you understand what I mean. Then after the five pieces, I have two pieces Hunting's Rage like head and shoulder and two daggers so I use two daggers because we went to get as much critical as possible okay we also have the thief mundus for short fights for me thief mundus is better that's why we want daggers, because precise, precise daggers, the precise gold daggers give 3.5 and the dagger from the like dual wield passives, as you know, increase your crit by 5% each. Okay. And as we know, most fights in wet dungeons are not long, okay? So that's why I prefer this setup. This setup is for shorter fights. If there was longer fights, we would use Maelstrom weapons, okay? But I will show you that when we get to the trial setup. Then, I use three pieces agility with Robust Trait. If, like, as you see, my health is really low, okay? So, the robust agility rings are really expensive so just if you want 18 or 17k health just get the ring with healthy trade and you're good you're still good to go the damage difference is not that big okay it's those kind of tweaks you need to to make for yourself i i don't care if i run around with 16k health okay in wet dungeons but maybe you do so maybe just get two healthy rings here and then you're good to go and it's all like it's a lot cheap not everybody has the money to buy robust agility rings because they're expensive just to throw that in here another important thing is we go seven piece medium because as we all know medium armor let me try to find it every piece increases our crit bonus weapon crit bonus okay so that's why we use seven pieces it's the thing. Then bow, if you have, use the maelstrom bow, okay? <laughs> because the enchantment is really good. Increases damage of volley by 161 per tick. Increasing by 56 every 0 0.5 seconds. This buffs arrow barrage here on the second bar so much is crazy okay like even in single targets fight you will get like like uh, four to five k dps from only this dot that's actually the only reason why stamina builds are still kind of viable okay and in aoe fights the the damage from arrow barrage alone is just just crazy high if you don't have a precise bow, it doesn't matter, you could even have a defending, okay? Because we only use, this bar is only to drop all the dots on the ground. Then we swap back to our main bar, okay? We jabbity jab. That's the thing. 
Okay. And you see, I have really low health, but I have quite a lot of stamina, okay? And again, our crit buffed is at 88% with the Thieves Mundustone. And as you know, we already get a small crit damage increase from Piercing Spear. Increases damage bonus for your critical strikes by 10%, okay? It's actually only 5% because the calculation is done wrong. At least I think so it's done wrong, but whatever. Even a 5% increase is nice. And we also have the beard trap that increases, like, it gives us minor force, which increases our critical damage by 12%. So we have kind of a 17% critical damage increase from beer trap and uh, passive and then we also have the CP here which at the moment I have 15.6 in so we, we got the huge increased critical damage modifier that's why I've chosen the thief over shadow okay with this setup again you also can use five huntings here and four night mothers here if you already have that on now i'm on pts okay on my life server i also on the life server I also have five huntings and four night mothers and i will not craft night mothers only because it does like 70 damage more it would be a huge waste of legendary materials okay now to the champion points that's where the most changes come into the build for the Thieves Guild update, okay? So it is really hard to say where the sweet spot is, okay? That's only the setup I use at the moment. So maybe there is better setups, okay? That's just how I handle it at the moment. Because I like it the most. So the changes that came to the build As you see, Toma Turge, it used to increase magic damage, okay? <laughs> Till Orsinium, <clears throat> but now it increases the effectiveness of your damage over time effects, dots. And Chaps also counts as a dot in this case, so you get the increase, which is really nice, okay? So we'll do a lot more chaps damage than we did in the last update to Thieves Guild. So Mighty also changed a little bit. Increases your physical poison and disease damage. So I put like 20% damage into here, so 72 points. Then 15.6% into precise strikes. And 14%, so 44 points into Toma Turge. Again, this might not be the optimal setup, okay? It's just that's what I run at the moment. Maybe maybe we should pu put 70 points here and only 50 here because we have so much crit that crits, okay? It's just how I run it at the moment. That's how I feel comfortable with it. If I'm doing any changes, I will put it in the description, okay? Or write it directly in the video here later on. <clears throat> so that's basically the damage setup, okay? The others, it's really up to you, like... If you're in a dungeon with a lot of fire damage, maybe put Elemental Defender more points in here because it reduces flame, frost, shock damage and magic. There's all the physical damage put it into hardy because you see that's also the uh, biggest change because hardy reduces physical damage now okay it's very it's not so important for pve but more for pvp and then i put some points into quick recovery to buff my healing then here let me give me a sec that's not right because we don't have a lot of stamina recovery so you really want to put most points into Warlord 
because it reduces the cost of your abilities. So just maybe put 90 points, 100 points and then put 30 points into Mooncalf because we want to have 30 here because of the Synergizer. Gives you two ultimate every time you activate the Synergy. And then I just put, put uh, like 30 to 40 in here because of Break Free and Dodge Row. But again, the most important ones are here because of the damage. <laughs> That's the thing. And also I forgot something before, you see like increases your physical poison and disease damage. Like poison and disease wasn't here either. So I've chosen to run like one poison glyph on my dagger, okay? Because it also gets buffed through the CP. And on the other one I have a weapon damage increase for uh, like 5 seconds as your weapon enchantment. So Glyph of Rage, Glyph of, Glyph of Poison, that's the thing. Now to the skills I use. As I said, I don't use the Maelstrom weapons for like 4-man dungeons and solo content, because usually the fights are short. <clears throat> and we all know, as I said before, Toma Turge increases dot damage, okay? So we have a lot of skills that are dots in our build. So let's go through them now. I will explain the trial setup later on, okay, at the back. Just to say it again. Now, let me start with Quick Cloak again. This is not necessary, like, I just like to run it because it gives you movement speed for 30% for 5 seconds. And you, the, you get reduced AoE damage, 20% AoE damage reduction from enemies, which is really nice. And it also does a little bit damage, okay. But if you don't want the speed buff from it, just put Power of the Light here, okay. Power of the Light, PvE-wise, got a little bit buffed. It can store more damage now than before. And it also, like, applies the Minor Breach and Minor Fracture. So the enemy's physical and spell resistance is reduced by 1.2k for 6 seconds. <clears throat> and then the next skill, Steel Tornado. This is our main AoE skill. I mean, everybody knows this skill. It got a small nerf compared to the last update. So at in Orsinium, till Orsinium it was 12.5 meters range and now it is 9 meters range only. But it's still super strong because the lower the mob's health is, the more damage you do. It is kind of execute, okay? All dual wield abilities are execute. execute. So you see, increased damage with dual wield abilities by 20% against enemies with under 25% health. That's how it is. Still works, still nice. And you also see dealing 5k physical damage from nearby enemies plus up to 100% additional damage against wounded targets based on their remaining health. So there is kind of two modifiers in here, okay? Up to 100% here plus the dual wheel passive which increases damage for for enemies that are under 25% health. So it's re it, de it deals really insane damage when the enemies only have low health, okay? That being said, let's move to the next. Biting Chaps is our main single target skill, and you also can use it for AoE, okay? If the mobs are really close together, it is nice damage. But usually for Trash, I prefer Steel Tornado. Just just that you know. But if there is two or three mobs really lined up, I just jab and I don't tornado. So if those three mobs are, like if I can hit all of them, then jabbing. And if the mobs get to low health, I will use Steel Tornado because of the execute damage. Then we have Rending Slashes, which is a really strong physical dot, okay? 
I only use it in boss fights though. So if there's a boss, I just apply rending slashes, and I know it will deal a lot of damage. And again, this passive it also works with rending slashes. So rending slashes does more damage when the enemy has like less than 25% health. <laughs> Evil Hunter. I mainly use this against undead or the either enemies. Okay. You don't really need it on the bar. So if you want power of the light and quick cloak, you can do it, okay? Because we all know biting chaps gives, a, gives us a major savagery, which increases critical strike rate. And I use crit potions anyway. So I don't really need Evil Hunter on my bar to get the crit. As you see, those potions, they give me weapon damage buff, they give me the crit buff, and they give me stamina. So let's leave it like this, doesn't matter. Then Dawnbreaker, this is mainly here because it increases my weapon damage by 8%. Okay. But against Undead or Daedroid is also really effective. Then to our, our bow bar, <coughs> kind of our buff bar. Here, Arrow Barrage the most important skill. So as you see, every 0 0.5 seconds it deals 1350 physical damage. And if you have the Master Bow, <laughs> that damage always gets more and more and more, okay? So this skill is crazy, eh? 4 to 5k deep si single target DPS. And AoE wise, like 10, 15k plus if there is a lot of trash mobs. <coughs> then cult drops. It it does not stack, okay, but one in the party should use it because it's a it's a nice dot. But be aware, you will pull aggro for all mobs. If you throw cult drops on a mob on mobs, they will all instant attack you, insta target you. So you have to be careful. Then poison injection is used when the enemy has less than 50% health, okay, because the ticks at the start, like from 100 to 50 are not that high, so I don't use it, but from 50 to 0 they get, they deal really nice damage. Then we have the beer trap, this is mainly here because of the minor force buff, because you get 12% increased critical damage which is really nice. <laughs> then Evil Hunter, you can have it here, you don't need to. You can slot something else. I, I don't even know what to slot anymore. But you can slot something else here. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Okay. Like whatever, a shield or something. It's really up to you. Then Ice Comet, I use this because I mostly use Ultimate on the boss. And it is a little bit more damage than Shooting Star. But if you want to use ultimates on trashes effectively, then use Shooting Star because you get more ulti back, okay? Or you also can use Nova. As you know, the Nova, the Synergy got buffed this patch again, so it even deals m like more fucked up damage, damage than it already did, okay? I don't know why they buffed this synergy, it doesn't make any sense at all, but anyway. Synergy got a little bit buffed, and if you throw that into a trash, somebody activates synergy, everything will die, more or less. So, as I said, like I will not give you a straight up rotation, okay? Because, like the... The rotations or the which skill to use is always situa like situational. So AOE wise, I always make sure to have cult drops on the ground, my dot up, then tornado. Okay. And if the dot is gone, reapply it, swap back. You can really you can do a tornado, then the bar swap. Arrow Barrage, swap back, okay? You see, it, it's really fast. You can animation cancel it with the bar swap, so you don't see everything at, like the animation. 
Now I do the whole animation. Okay, three slow. But now I do the... I use skill and then I bar swap. You see? And it still works. But you don't lose as much time as if you let the, the animation run out. Okay. Single target wise, again, main damage ability is biting chaps, okay? But, rending slashes is a nice dot, power of the light benefits the whole party. Arrow barrage has to be up on single target, cult drops as well. Poison injection from 50 to 0. But if there's no time to keep the dot up, just spam chaps. If, it's, if he has 1% HP left, you don't need to reapply the dots. Dots are always only useful if they run through the whole duration of the dot, okay? Because if you put arrow barrage up and the boss dies after a second, it will not be good damage. Better spam another traps, okay? That's how it is. There is also a possibility to run two-hander if you want to, okay? Like dual wield and bow is the most optimal one, but if you want to run a two-hander, you can run a two-hander, it's no problem. You have to decide that for yourself. Wet dungeons or solo dungeons, you don't need a, you, you don't need to min-max stuff, okay? A two-hander two and a bow build works as well, or a two-hander and a dual wield build. It's really up to you. Okay, now the werewolf part. I decided to talk about the werewolf part first and then swap over to the trial settings, okay? Because, again, werewolf is really effective in short fights. As you know, in most wet dungeons, the boss fights are pretty short if you have decent DPS, okay? As long as there is a single target. If there's only one boss, then use a werewolf. If there's two bosses, then it is not good. Better use biting chaps, like in human form, okay? Now, let me try to explain to you the werewolf a little bit. So, werewolf has a few really strong abilities, like Hole of Agony, okay? If I buff myself, my Hole of Agony does 15.166k damage. So, that's basically the same as a Wrecking Blow. But you see, a Wrecking Blow has one second cast time, okay? A Werewolf hole is instant. So basically, that's why people call it uh, instant Wrecking Blow. <laughs> because it's the same damage as Wrecking Blow, but it doesn't, it doesn't have any cast time. So if we do single target DPS on a boss, all we use is hole of agony and light attacks. And we always want to make sure to keep the Hearsin's Rage buff up, because as you see, it heals you, but it doesn't matter, but it increases your web damage by 10%, okay? Which is really nice. And it holds for 20 seconds, okay? So, it will hold for most of the fight. So again, this one is important and this one. The others are not really needed for PvE. PvP is another thing, but this is a PV build. Then, we choose the Berserker Morph, because there is always only short fights, and we don't need more duration in variable form, okay? And the Berserker Morph gives you, like, more bleed damage. So the bleeding crits can be really high in variable, okay? Like 15k crits, for example, if you're really buffed up to with aggressive warhorn, etc., can deal a really shit ton of damage. <clears throat> then now to the mechanics of werewolf. So there is some issues, not issues, let's say a bug. So let me try to explain. When I have Evil Hunter here, okay, on both bars, or let me first explain the first bug. Now you see I have 88%, okay? Now I activate my crit potion, I still have 88. Now I swap to my bow bar, it dropped to 69. Now I will 
put this one back and it's up to 79. So what happened? So what the program at the moment does, this has been several times reported but nothing has been done for it yet. My potion has a crit buff, okay, but the program kind of like it it sees, okay, I have the weapon crit potion buff, but then it also sees I have Aerial Hunter here, okay, and it takes kind of, it only remembers Diff's buff, but the weapon crit buff from the potion not anymore. So when I swap to the second bar, it sees, shit, Aerial Hunter is gone. So it takes away the crit, although I have uh, the potion running, but it's not there anymore, the crit is gone. Because Evil Hunter overwrote the, the potion buff. That's how it is, okay? That's how it is. And now, <coughs> that's kind of the basics of the issue. Now let's get to the werewolf thingy, why it is important to remove. So now here, when I transform into werewolf, I lose a few things, okay? Like, so let, let's first say I keep all the set bonuses, okay, here. And I keep the precise, precise uh, the trait, so I get the 7% crit. But I will lose 10% overall crit from my daggers, okay? Because it doesn't count in werewolf form, sadly. Now the next thing, so you lose 10% there, okay? Then, if you activate the potion now and then transform, you think, okay, I will have the crit buff. But as soon as you transformed into werewolf and you still have Evil Hunter slotted, Evil Hunter goes away because you can't have that in Werewolf and you lose 12% crit. Okay. So that's why I say if you want to kind if you know you're going to transform to Werewolf, don't slot Evil Hunter. Okay. You can do it on the f on the second bar, yes, because you will not be able to swap in Werewolf form. But this is how the optimal setup is for Werewolf. The Evil Hunter is there, you're going to lose crit if you use the potion before you transform. If you use it afterwards, then it doesn't matter. So now let's see. I will transform. And you see, I got a lot more weapon damage. I buffed myself. I have even more. And my weapon crit, I lost kind of 10% because the daggers don't count. Okay. And you see the stamina got a huge buff. You got so much more stamina and you got so much more weapon damage. So now my hole does 18k physical damage. This is so much. Maybe it's even more. I'm not sure if I had the Hearsin's Rage active. So a werewolf is a fucking beast. How it's supposed to be. And only by spamming. Hole of Agony and Light Attacks, okay? The faster you can animation cancel the Hole of Agony with a Light Attack, the more DPS you will get. <coughs> Once I will upload videos from dungeons, I will, I will show you that. Because I always use Werewolf and there is only a single target boss and it lasts less than 30 seconds. Because it's the, the highest DPS a stamina player can get, okay? That's how it is. So werewolf is strong. Level that shit up if you if you're a stamina build. It takes long to level it up. So make sure you do it while you're grinding and not afterwards because it's lost time. Okay, now to the trial setup. First off the gear. Now in the trial setup I use twice born star over night mother's case or hunting's rage, okay? So I have five twice born star, night mother's shoulder, night mother's head, and two night mother's daggers. One weapon damage increase and one reduced armor. But you also could use a poison glyph here, okay? It, the difference is really small. Now 
I use Thief and Shadow move Mundus, okay? You see, when I buff myself, <laughs> I'm at 37k stamina. I have now more health because, as you see, it increases max health and max stamina and max magicka. Then, weapon damage is at 3. 7k and weapon crit at 82.5 it is a little bit lower okay but it doesn't matter because we have the shadow mundus and in trials like you're not going to win the trial alone that's what you have to realize and most people are not realizing that your healers, they need spell power cures, somebody has to wear powerful assault, all those support sets which buff weapon and spell damage, okay? Those are really important. You need to have all classes in the group because everybody has their own small buffs. But I will do a separate video about that later because I don't want to talk about this now, otherwise I could talk another hour, I guess. Okay, so that's the setup I've chosen, because twice born star and you see aggressive warhorn, mainly because of this. We have a lot of crit and we have shadow which increases our critical damage and we always have like three to four aggressive warhorns in our raids because they increase critical strike damage by 30%, okay, for almost 10 seconds. And if you can keep that buff up almost all the time, you will do so much more damage, okay? That's why. That's why I've chosen that, like we choose always twice Born Star over other sets. That's the thing. Now, now you might think, oh, it's time for Maelstrom daggers, okay? But it's not. So let me try to explain to you. <clears throat> For example, AA and Hellra. Mostly only shorter fights, okay? Sanctum and Mo of Lorcai, longer fights. So, AA and Hellra, we use four pieces Night Mother's Gaze, okay? Over the Maelstrom weapons, because you benefit more from crit and weapon damage. Because you can get more, in shorter fights, you get more damage from chaps and all that stuff with the night mother's things okay <laughs> skills didn't really change at all for a and hellra okay basically the same thing as for wet dungeons now let's see let me check for no i, I want the precise one yep as much precise as we can get. Now I have to check if I have gear here or, or let me let me do it like that. <laughs> so first off to the Maelstrom weapons. As you see like they increase your single target dots by 3k weapon damage, which is a lot, okay? <laughs> now, what you can do is, you could use like two Houndings or two Nightmothers to get another crit, or you could use a Molakena piece and another random piece to get more health. Because 17.3k, especially in Maw of Lorca, is kind of low, okay? So that's why I prefer to have a Molakina piece, which gives me a weapon damage bonus, and a random monster set that gives me health bonus. If you want, you can run two Molakina. If you want, you can run two, two Valkin. If you want, you can run two Mephalas. It's just that's how I prefer my trial setup at the moment, okay? Twiceborn Star. A Kina, some random stuff with health bonus and two Maelstrom weapons. Now, we have a Dagger Precise and we have an Ox Precise. So, we use one Ox because the bleeding is really strong, okay? 
As you can see, each ox gives you melee attacks, an 8% chance to bleed enemies for 12k physical damage over 6 seconds. So, the highest bleeding tick I have seen yet <laughs> was 18k, okay? So, it's insane dot damage. Then, anyway, you lose 5% crit. So, if you have two dagger precise, go with two dagger precise. You don't need to to kill your soul grinding maelstrom for that ox precise, okay? <laughs> but if you have like only daggers with defending, then just use the night mother's gaze setup. But again, maelstrom weapons and ox really strong in longer fights, okay? In shorter fights, not so. Better night mother's gaze for peace. <clears throat> Then now, let's go to the skills, before I forget something. So, Maelstrom weapons do not buff biting chaps, okay? Does not buff biting chaps. <laughs> now, another trick with Maelstrom weapons. I've made a tutorial about that. I will link it in the description so you can see for yourself again. If so basically what you have to do is, you have to use rapid strikes on the boss, then do rending slashes, okay? Rapid strikes, poison injection. Those are the two skills to get buffed by the Maelstrom weapons. Now the trick is, Chaps, I feel it's a little bit stronger, okay? And it's easier to light attack with with it than rapid strikes. The rapid strikes just feels kind of clunky to me. So I really prefer <coughs> biting chaps. Now, there is a possibility to keep this 3.1k weapon damage without using rapid strikes ever, every time it runs out. So what you can do is, before rending slashes runs out, you can reapply rending slashes, okay? Then rending slashes will keep those 3.1k weapon damage. I tested this and you can see it in the tutorial I made, okay? I will link it in the description. So we have proof. So basically at the start you only need to use rapid strikes, rendings, rapid poison ejection. Then just make sure to keep rending slashes up and poison up all the time. I still prefer to use poison ejection only after 50% boss health, okay? So at the start, I only use rapid strikes, rendings, and then I fucking spam chaps. So hard. Power of the light in trial setup, also very important. It's 1.2k armor and spell resistance that is gone, okay? And it does, does decent damage, 22k is not bad. Don't forget to keep up the arrow barrage dot, it is really strong. Don't forget to keep cult drops up if there is nobody else to use it. Don't forget to keep rearming trap up. So basically, the buff you get here is like for 12 seconds, okay? So what you can do is you have to decide for yourself. So every time you swap to the second bar and you drop arrow barrage, you can also drop beer trap. Or you can use jabs arrow barrage and uh, chaps and the second time you swap back you can use arrow barrage and then beer trap I prefer this so I set up beer trap every second weapon swap kinda that's how I use it but really maybe maybe it's better to run it every turn or it's it's hard to say it's hard to say if you have time to set the trap up, just set it up if the boss is far away for example and you can't get to him or something like that and you know he will walk back there. Those are all those kind of small things. I can't just tell you a rotation, I just can give you ideas and tips. That's how it works. Okay, now, again like I don't need any, I don't need rally or I don't need the, like brutality buff from f f hidden blade for example because I have my potions here, okay? 
those potions. I always use those. I usually always use a vet 10, but you also can use a vet 15 to keep the buff up 24 7. So that was basically it for the Chaps Mania build in Thieves Guild. If you have any questions, just ask me in the comment section below, okay? If I have any updates to make, I will write it into the video itself and put it into the description, okay? Just so, so you know. Okay, thanks guys for watching the video guide. I know it took a little bit long, but I really want to, to be sure that you get the idea of the build, okay? So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Cheers guys!